Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Washington, Washington, we need to talk about safe storage. Why is that? Well, I got a pretty horrible story I'm going to share with you. It's compliments of our friends over at KUOW. Uh, it has to do with some horrifically negligent storage of firearms that has now resulted in not one, not two, but 23 firearms not being able to be accounted for. And worse yet, it takes place in one of Washington state's most dangerous communities. Shocking to say the least. The party that's responsible is, oh yeah, well let's spend a minute today and let's talk about, is the Seattle Police Department actually making their city more dangerous? What do you got there, man? Tech pack. Oh, sweet. A tack pack? Nice. Oh, what's a tack pack? Uh, that's the new sponsor of the channel. So what's in a tack pack? Oh, what's in a tack pack? Well, here's the best thing. It is a monthly subscription of all sorts of tactical gear. And I mean, they got a lot of really cool stuff. The best part about it is that they actually have two separate subscription models. So they got their tack pack standard, which ships at $59.95 a month. Best thing about that is it really has a value of about somewhere between $90 and $120. And then they got the Tac Pack Plus. Now that ships at $139.95 a month, but, oh, check this out. They actually have a value of somewhere between $240 and $300. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's super cool. And here's the coolest part yet, because if you sign up right now for the Tac Pack Plus and you use the promo code GUNLAWYT, you're gonna get an extra $60 everyday carry kit, which means that your initial investment for less than $140, you're gonna be ended up getting over $300 worth of tactical gear. Listen, look at some of the cool things you're gonna get if you subscribe to Tac Pack today. So get down there, check out the link below, make sure you use the promo code GUNLAWYT. Check out Tac Pack. Okay, Dateline, September 22nd, KUOW actually ran this story. It is about the Washington State Auditor that has a beef with the Seattle Police Department right now because the Seattle Police Department cannot account for 23 firearms. Let me say that again, 23 firearms. And they have not been able to account for those firearms since 2017. And why is that important? Okay, I know that the Seattle Police Department gets a bad rap and the Seattle Police Department has been absolutely dismantled from the inside out, not by the Seattle Police Department, but by the Seattle City Council. Now, I know this council has changed hands and theoretically they may be going in a different direction. They certainly couldn't have gone in any worse of a direction. So there are problems with the Seattle Police Department. I have many friends within the Seattle Police Department. I think rather highly of the officers that work within that department. I have no beef with the department as a whole. Now, I am going to pick on the Seattle Police Department here because, again, a lot of this goes back to 2017. And if you take a look at the problems that the Seattle Police Department had, a lot of that began in 2020 and 2021 when the city council got all caught up in all the George Floyd stuff and decided the best solution to have an equal justice system is to ruin the main component of the justice system, which is the police department. So shockingly, when you defund police department, crime goes up. Who would have ever thought? Okay. But I want you to understand that there are 23 firearms that the Seattle Police Department cannot account for going all the way back to 2017. And you got to consider what's missing and where it's missing from here. One, 18 Glock lower frames from the training unit. Two, a modified shotgun now inoperable from the training unit. Okay, so right there, we got 19 of the firearms from the training unit. Now, I don't know what you are training in the training unit, but clearly you are not training on Washington State's safe storage laws. However, there's more firearms missing. Three, a Glock 22 lower from the police range. Four, a shotgun from either the range or the quartermaster. So one that actually came off the police range, now just drew legs and walked away, and then another one where they're not even really sure where it got taken from, and then, and this is perhaps the worst one, a rifle and pistol from the locker of an officer who returned from military leave. That's right, a modern military issued rifle and pistol taken from the police officer's own locker upon returning from military leave. 
Now, the Seattle Police Department, in trying to sidestep this issue a little bit, wanted to point out that these were not complete firearms. They were only the lower receiver. So that is true. It is only the lower receiver. You know the exact same part that you and I and any other lawful and responsible person has to fill out a 4473 and go through a background check before we can take possession. Why is that? Well, because under both state and federal law, the lower receiver is the firearm. So, you know, you can put a bow or whipped cream on this pile of crap all you want, SPD, but the bottom line is, is that with the exception of the inoperable firearm, we don't know if it was rendered temporarily inoperable or permanently inoperable, but beyond that, all the rest of these are technically functional firearms. But let us not forget that this is not the first time they've had this problem. Back in 2021, Chief Carmen Best decided to do a little snooping around and kind of an audit of the department and found in one annex a bunch of firearms that were being stored in a metal cabinet that would be more appropriate for storing paperwork. And then also found in a second annex that the gun storage unit was really just a room that was secured with a normal lock on a normal door. As a matter of fact, that report found that both of the annexes, theoretically designed to store firearms, were not actually in compliance with Washington State's safe storage law. Now, the Seattle Police Department has been able to identify all of the firearms through serial numbers and placed them all into the NICS system. Hopefully, they will hit a trace at one point and they will turn up. That will likely, unfortunately, be at a crime scene. Listen, we're gonna go ahead and link up the story from KUOW down there in the description box if you guys got any more questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. And in Washington State, that is not much anymore. You guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now, but if you don't, that's okay. That information is down in the description box. Maybe you got an idea for a video we should be doing around here. If you do, go ahead and click on that link. Tell us all about it. It's probably better than any idea we're gonna come up with. Maybe you just want to subscribe to our monthly newsletter. The ability to do all of that is down there in the description box. And then finally, and most importantly, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.